Thank you everyone for joining us for our very first top 10 list here at the Modern Playbook. Uh, we have put together a list of 10 comics that we think have great long-term potential. Unlike most of the other top 10 lists you may watch or follow, we're not looking at what's done well last week. We're looking at the kind of books that we think have great potential over the next 6, 12 months or longer. Uh, this list was put together by the members of the Modern Playbook. We each submitted ideas onto a list, and then we ranked that list to come up with the top 10 uh, for this given week. Um, so we're going to jump right into it right now with number 10. Here we go. So this is number 10, uh, and I got the fancy graphics right. Bam. Yes, Nico. <laughs> so. And here we go. All right. So number 10 this week is Incredible Hulk number 449. Uh, first appearance of the Thunderbolts. Um, there's a lot of speculation that we're going to see the Thunderbolts here in the MCU pretty quickly. Uh, maybe as soon as Black Widow um, uh, with Thunderbolt Ross leading the charge. Uh, Mel, you got any thoughts on this book? Well, Thunderbolt Ross is going to have to be a key factor here uh, as well as the Red Hulk. Um, I like to play on this like where they can go with this. Um I can't wait to see what happens with it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, th this could be sort of the the bad Avengers. Uh, there's a lot of talk um, that that this is coming in in in, in one way or another. Um, a, a lot of buzz around this. I think what we should point out is that while this book is heavily printed, uh, there is a newsstand variant that's worthwhile keeping an eye open for. And uh, if you find that, you know, you guys should be grabbing that for your PCs as quickly as you can. I can never find those. Yeah, oh, man, that thing is. <laughs> Everyone knows about it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, On to number we, nine. So we got number nine for everybody. Look at these fancy graphics. I see that. You're really proud of these little graphics. Oh, right? No, that's what I do. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is Eternals number three. Um, uh, Rich, you got any thoughts on this book? Yeah. Yeah. Um... This is uh, from the famous uh, volume one Jack Kirby run. Uh, this is your first appearance of Cersei, which I believe was casted um, and being played by Gemma Chan. Is that how you pronounce the name? I'm not sure, but I've seen her in a lot of stuff and she's a great actor. I just think it's funny that, you know, it's confirmed that her and Kit Harrington's uh, character, the Black Knight, uh, have a love romance relationship in the movie which leads to believe that she is going to be a lead character in this movie, yet you can find the experiment copies of this book for between $30 and $40 raw, and then, you know, nine eighths uh, that are, you know, within most people's budget. I think once the movie drops, um, you know, we could see uh, return on investment gains on this book. Yeah, no, I know. You know, I think you bring up a great point there. I mean, Eternals for, for a lot of people have just sort of, faded into the background. Um, and I think you hit on a really good point there with The Black Knight, right? I think that's another book that's not going to show up on this list this week. Um, but a character that Kevin Feige said is important to uh, the MCU going forward. And uh, a lot of people aren't, aren't really thinking about it. So I think Eternals, a lot of those characters, uh, huge long-term spec potential within the MCU. Absolutely agree. I'm not, hype, I'm not happy about the Eternals movie, which means it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. We got uh, number eight. So number eight would be this book. All right. Uh, so this is Secret War uh, number two, and this is the sketch variant. Uh, this book is important because it's the first appearance of Quake. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of speculation that Quake is going to be used somewhere in the MCU. I know that we saw Quake in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you watch any of the Marvel cartoons, Quake is heavily featured uh, in those, whether it's the um, uh, Marvel Rising cartoons, where, where she's in most of those. Uh, it's a character that, uh, that the company definitely seems to want to push. Uh, yeah. This book is particularly attractive because um, the print count on it is far less than what you'd find on the first print. And um, if, if, if anything happens with Quake, we think that this book would uh, would, would likely take off. Uh, any Anybody have any anything they want to offer on this one in particular? Uh, uh, this is one that's near and dear to my heart personally. 
Is there another one where it's like a gold has like gold lettering? Or am I thinking about another book? Yeah, that's the first print. Or oh, well, it's the first print. Okay. It's gold lettering, but it's like Wolverine's on the front like that, but he's he's wearing that, you know, the yellow and brown. Candy. Okay, okay, got you, got you. All right. Yeah, yeah, could I forget the cover? The, the, the Secret Wars in red or purple or some something like that, pretty shiny. Uh, but but you know this series was you know you know super anticipated, well ordered. Um, you know this this second prince is it, it, a bit harder to come by. And and I'm gonna add too that uh, the Marvel Strike Force mobile game actually has Quake in it, which is surprising. You know you figure. You know, it's a, a sub tier character with all the like other big boy characters out there. So having Quake in a mobile game, it's I mean, Marvel, Marvel's trying to push it all on in, on all ends of the spectrum. So it's it's good to hear. Yeah, that's exactly right, Dina. She's showing up everywhere. All these little spots that planting the seeds. I yeah. think we're going to see her again in the MCU. Whether it's the same actress or not, I have no idea. It um, should be. Uh, but th but this is this is a good bet, I think. Yep. They more was like like good with that when they want to stick to the seeds that they had planted in un, in previous other um media outlets. So I think they'll be should be the same. It should it should be the same. Cool. Here we go. So we got number seven. Number seven. Um so this is Hawkeye number nine, the second print. Um, you know, in my opinion, this is easily um a top ten. Uh, modern comic cover um, easily. Um, um, uh, this the story in this is actually particularly good, but the, the cover has become iconic. Um, the book is super hard to come by. I believe there's eight nine point eights on the census, um, so very difficult to find in high grade. These things were stuck in back issue bins for years and had the snot kicked out of them. Um, um, but, but a cover that, that that's just absolutely stunning. And Haley Steinfeld and the Hawkeye show is going to be an absolute home run, um, in my opinion. And, uh, and this is maybe one of Kate Bishop's very best covers. Uh, and, and anybody else have any, any, any thoughts or comments on this book? Honestly, I'm not a fan of Second Prince, but again, the market is spoken. And I'm in the back. I'm in the background. I passed this book so many times, but we're not going to get into that. So I think it's a great pick going forward. Yeah, the purple on the second print makes it pop, and it and just because it's her color, I just think it makes it really work. Uh, if I if if I recall, I think there were 2,500 or less of these ordered by retailers, uh, most of which weren't particularly well looked after. So um, just a really sharp book. The first the first print is in all red. Yeah, I can't uh, imagine a lot of retailers ordered a second print on on a number nine. So no. Right. Yeah. Ben, what do you think that the shirt means? I mean, I'm trying to, is she saying she loves Hawkeye Clint Barton or she loves herself as Hawkeye? Yeah, I mean, I think she's, I, I think it's just being playful, like 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 the character is. I mean, right. there, there definitely was some tension between the characters in this um, series, if you read it a little bit, but um, I just say, I, I just think I love Hawkeye, whether it's her, Clint, or whomever, just, just, just the actual the book, if you will. So yeah, I, I read the run this this week, and it, yeah, it, it it's pretty good. Yeah, if anybody hasn't read this, I'd run right out. And this issue in particular um, was really good. Um, so um, you know, Clint it gets caught up with a number of different women in this in this book, and uh, and and they all kind of crisscross a little bit in this one in particular. And Cl 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 on to this one. Um, you know, there's a pretty strong uh, first uh, appearance in Camden uh -huh. of uh, the clown. Um, what, what's his name? Uh, Casimir's? I think yes. Yeah. And he, I believe he's already captured for Hawkeye, or at least heavily rumored. On top of that, I don't, I, last time I checked, there was only two or three of these on the census. I think, I believe two of them were on the census. That's right. Two nine eights. I misspoke. There are two nine eights, and I think 11 total uh, on the census. Not. Yeah. yeah you're right. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a it's a nice sin story first, and uh, like you said, a beautiful cover, low, you know, supply and demand is there, but, you know, hard to find. I think it's a great pick. Yeah, I mean, it's not a cheap book right now. I mean, it's actually spiked um, into um, this recent Hawkeye news. Yep. Um, but um, but it could have a way to go, just given how scarce it is. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, and I, I drew number six. This is Nico. So, 
<laughs> oh, Nico was number ten. No. Where's the Puma? Yeah. Uh, here we go. All right, so we got something killing the children. Uh, number nine, second print. Um, if uh, this book um, is the origin of Erica Slaughter, um, um, who's a you know phenomenally well written character by James Tinian. Um, you know, th th this ties into something that I think is going to become increasingly important in comics again. You know, back when I collected, and a lot of us collected in the 90s, origin issues were really sort of right there neck and neck with first appearances. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that kind of faded as the years went on, but I think we may see a resurgence of that. Um, but this book right here, uh, low print run, uh, features her origin. Uh, and the cover ties into that. So, do, does anybody else have any thoughts on on, on this cover? I, I don't know if anybody. Yeah, I, I love this one. And and there's not it's not only the origin. There's a first appearance of the lady with the the axe, who's uh, a big big part of the gonna. I, I feel has to be a big part of the story. I mean, it's going for ten bucks right now, and I think there's a lot of upside on this book for sure. Uh, you look at what some of the second and later printings do on the series, and it's it's insane. Um, I know the number three goes for like four hundred dollars and nine eight, um, and I mean just back through the whole series. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely one I would watch. Yeah, and the late printings on this didn't really start to you know really get heavily ordered until a bit more recently. So I. I, I We'd have to double check what, what what the estimates around this book are, but I'm sure it's relatively small uh, given what we're seeing out there. Yeah, the, you know, there's a there's a sick one in 25 by uh, Deladera. Is that, is that how you pronounce his name? I think it's Deladera. Yeah, and, uh, he's a new artist to me, so if I'm mispronouncing, I apologize. But yeah, I mean that's a, another cover to consider if you're not looking or if you cannot find this cover because this is going to be a hard to find cover. In a few weeks or a month, or month, for sure. All right. That was Nico that. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, Invincible Iron Man number one. The action figure variant so this is riri's williams first um first solo title if you will even though it was you know dubbed iron man um you know these these action figure variants were really uh tough to come by so retailers had to order um i'm gonna pull my notes here 250 percent um of iron man 10 of this book um so Iron Man 10 had about 50,000 copies ordered. So to order 250% of that, that means they had to order 125,000 collectively as a Jeez. community, right, in order to be able to access this book. This book, um, um, Iron um, Iron Man number one, had about 100,000 ordered. So what that means as sort of stores across the country on average weren't a, didn't order enough to actually get the right to buy this book. Um and if you look for it, it's really difficult to find out there. There's a handful of these um, action figure variants that have really high qualifiers. This, American number one, there's several others. Um, and as a result, you know, retailers said, you know what, I'm not going to sort of order that many copies, and they never got it. Um, I, Ruby Williams is going to be a huge star, uh, in my opinion, for, for the MCU. She's got her own series. She's already tied to the Armor War series, and she's already going to be tied to feature film. Uh, it's going to be a character that we're going to see for a long, long time. And a lot of her first appearances and in in, in, uh, in in number one issues are going to go crazy, I think, over the next several years. So um, um, they're, they're heating up, but they haven't even begun to right. get where they're going to get. <laughs> I absolutely agree. She's got also a huge hope for her. I like these uh, John Tyler Christopher covers. I, I know, you know, we've seen a lot of them. We pass them by and and, and pick the cent dollar bins. But this one, obviously, with, with the stats that Ben has just uh, let us all know about, was is, is literally a ghost. If you see it, I would grab it. 
right? Yeah, this isn't even on eBay that often. If you find, and when you do find it on eBay, people aren't marking them up. They're 10, 12 bucks. I think that's more than fair for how hard this book is to find. Um, but I, I never see them hunting in back issue bins. If you do, grab this one. You'll be happy that you did. And the word to the wise is that um, for our viewers out there, whether you're out in the wild or online looking for this, because there's been what eight, nine volumes of Invincible yeah. Iron Man. <laughs> and there was a uh, Tony Stark Iron Man cover that looks almost exactly like this one, except for the obvious, you know, uh, gender and and uh, and and uh, and racial differences. <laughs> um, but you no, know, it, it is it is really easy to mix up. Um, uh, you know, looking online. Because you, you, if you type in Invincible Iron Man action figure variant, yeah, um, you, you'll make the pick and you'll go, you know, oh, wow, there's plenty of these things. There's plenty of the Tony Stark version, not the Riri one. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And you know what I also like about this is, it's, you know, it's the first time we're actually seeing her donning the Ironheart armor. And with the action figure variant, you get close, detailed uh uh, uh, I guess you could say, look at her face, her weapons. I mean, it's just cool. It's a, it bring it's it's nostalgia to me. It brings you back yeah. to flying action figures. Yeah, and the, that that's a great point, Richie. And the last point I'd make here is there's some some debate when she becomes Ironheart. Three, right? Three. <laughs> yes, it does say Ironheart front and center in big, you know, capital letters here. So. Um, three. They clearly knew where this character was going before issue number three. So three, three um, is the one. Yeah. If we, if While we it's in, if, in if the inside, story, you know, this, this, one, this, one's, this one's clearly on the cover, but cover uh, is cool. But three, oh boy, <laughs> there you go. What it says Iron Heart on the cover? All right, so this this is Vision number one, um, the first appearance of Viv Vision. Um, so uh, this is the only cover that has her featured on the cover of it. There, there, there's several variants of this, um, um, but but this is the only one where, where, where she's featured. Um, the only pushback you could get is that there is a director's cut that, that has um, almost like a sketch version of this cover um, where she's there as well. Um, there, there are several, several other ways to play this book. There's the hip hop variant, um, um, which 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 goes for quite a bit. There's a one in twenty five and a one in fifty, I believe. Uh, the Sook variant is the one in twenty five. Uh, sorry, Ryan, no, what's that? Is the Ryan Sook um, one in twenty five? Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. Gotcha. Yeah, so the, the, there, there's quite a few that are chased here, um, but but Viv, um, she's a central character within the Champions, um, and a character that that many believe is going to have a place within the MC, the younger uh, generation of the MCU going forward. Uh, this book is relatively inexpensive, but actually goes for quite quite a bit in high grade in, in, in the 9.8. I think one may have just sold for 200 recently, um, but a book that you can find uh, if you hunt out there. And, and she seems to be a character of growing importance. It's, and the, the series itself was critically acclaimed. It was very good read. Um, but how would they implement Viv Vision with Scarlet Witch? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they're going to tie her to Scarlet or not. I mean, that, that's a difficult one. It seems like within one division, it's going to be Speed and Wiccan as those two kids everybody's right. speculating on. Um, I don't know if there's any way for them to tie Viv into Vision going forward. That, that That's really up in the air at the moment. Um, uh, but there is um, there is a lot of um, speculation and talk that Viv is going to be coming here at, at some point. Um, and that's why this book, this book made the list. Gotcha. Oh, we got number three here. Look at those moves. Look at those moves. <laughs> All right. I like this. So this is Captain America number six, cover B. Uh, first appearance of the Winter Soldier and first cover appearance. Many of you may know that cover A. Um, looks very similar to this, but features Captain America. Um, uh, this one features um, uh, Winter Soldier front and center. Uh, Cat, um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is coming out March 19th. Uh, Winter Soldier 
for for many people, I mean, that movie is it was the best that Marvel produced, and I don't want to get into a bait, but I think that's fairly highly regarded amongst many as 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 some of the best stuff Marvel ever put out. Yeah. Uh, central character of the MCU, who who I believe is actually committed to a long term contract. We're going to be seeing um, we're going to be seeing Bucky um, for a long, long time. Um, clearly, having his own TV show and just an undervalued key. Uh, in the current environment, you know, when so many other books are trading at super premiums, um, you know, this one is actually relatively affordable given the importance of the character. Rich, What's I know you book? This book. Any any thoughts on this one? You know, Ben, um, I, 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 you make some great points. Um, you know, not only it's a it's a it's a wonderful cover, and don't forget, you know, Winter Soldier has a first appearance in cameo. I think it's a number one, but this one here is in full, and you have the the first cover appearance comicron numbers have the orders by retailers around 47k in north america so i don't know this is a variant i just put it in half maybe 50 percent i don't even have a guesstimation but that is a respectable number for an established character in the mcu like you said i mean arguably well in my mind definitely the best movie of phase two uh captain uh the winter soldier he was the key character in Civil War, one of the best movies, you know, at that time. And then now he has his own D plus show. I, I I checked recent sales and uh, I seen sales as low as thirty seven dollars in the mm. last uh, three weeks, but I've also seen sales as high as eighty to eighty five. But then there was a nine two CGC that sold for forty one dollars about a week ago. So uh, I think an average uh, member to, 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 to get in play is around sixty sixty five bucks which seems like a home run to me. That is very affordable. And I see this book, you know, three to five years from now, people scratching their heads going, man, I could have paid 50, 60, $65 for that book. I think this is a great book. I, I would agree. I think your numbers are right, Richie. I think, you know, conservatively, we can say there's probably somewhere between 20 and maybe as many as 23,000 of this out there of this cover um which is which is which is a small a small print run in, in the modern era um there is a super rare version it's not this cover it's the other cover there's a new stand of the cover a which is is the rarest of the bunch um if you ever see that you should probably pay whatever the asking price is i'm joking but if, if you do <laughs> the new stand of cover a grab it i mean that is a genuine a, a genuine modern ghost but uh, an outstanding book, um, one I'm happy to have in my collection, and yeah, I, I agree, it, it's wildly undervalued. Cool. So, what is that in the background? Uh, I think I think it's water. I think it's supposed to be water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number Sixteen, first appearance of Monica Rambeau. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, she is clearly going to be uh, a central character in the MCU. She's going to be a major part of one division. She's a major part of Captain Marvel two, um, and a character that I think a lot of people are overlooking at the moment. Uh, this is her first appearance, and uh, you know, while there are a lot of books printed um, in this era, um, a, a book that I think a lot of people probably aren't given. Uh, giving the attention that it deserves. Anybody have any thoughts on this one? Two two points on it. Uh, one, it's it's an annual, so uh, you know back back in the day, um, you know I've, I have a theory about about annuals that mm -hmm. um, I, I don't hear a lot about. I mean, they were more expensive, and it really did matter that it was a do dollar, not you know fifty cents or whatever the regular issues were back then. Um, so. I, I I don't think they're as plentiful, although you know ASM, um, you know certainly had a large print run. The other thing is it also makes it a thicker book, right? So we know with uh, books with the the uh, thicker spines, the larger uh, page counts, um, you know what that does to the to the uh, corners of the spine. Um, so yeah, it, it's 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 a hard high grade book. Um, and the other thing about uh the characters marvel's clearly playing the long game here right they planted the seeds uh for monica 
back in the, the Captain Marvel movie. So, I mean, they've been planning leading up to this adult character for the past uh, two, three years. And, you know, the planning that went before that, right, before it even came into theaters. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think this is a great long term uh, uh, and it's still relatively uh, affordable. I think no, she's uh, going to be a huge star, and people are chasing these soon enough. What are, what are they hitting yeah, right I mean, now? Last I checked, about uh, I think direct copies were going for between forty-eight and sixty-nine. So let's just say fifty to fifty-five bucks range, uh, dollar range. <coughs> that, was, that, was, that was about three weeks ago. That's um, solid. That's a solid pickup right there. A, a nine eight sells for five fifty. Okay. Nine eight. So that's yeah. I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I got one of these, but it's like, not nine eight. Like I said, it was three weeks ago was before the the announcements. But you know, and and another thing is is it, you make great points, uh, Steve. Uh, really good points. Uh, but uh, this Monica Rambeau is is casted by uh, uh, Tiona Paris. And uh, I mean, not only she's uh, you know vibrant, beautiful, and a great actor, but she is a big time A list star who is still young, and that's what MCU likes to do. Before they hit their peak in in the contract, that's what I noticed is before they hit that peak amount, they like to lock them in. And she's already cast it in Captain Marvel two as well. So I think this book has legs, and I think it's a great fit. Cool. I agree. Perfect. And here we go, boys. The number one book. Penis book. <laughs> All right. So number one um, on our list is Moon Girl and Dev Devil Dinosaur. Number one, the hip hop variant. Now, this hip hop variant, in order to get it, you needed to uh, retailers needed to order a hundred and fifty percent of what they ordered. For Miss Marvel 17. Mm -hmm. Miss Marvel 17 did about 31,500 copies. This book, Moon Girl <laughs> number one, cover A, or in total, did 38,000. <laughs> to be clear, 150 um, should be, um, you know, 45,000 plus books. Most retailers didn't order enough to qualify for this one. So, so this book is really tough to come by. Um, that said, I don't think it gets the respect that it deserves. Um, and I will say this, because I've hunted it for a while. This all-black cover is tough as hell to find in high grade. It gets Amen. the daylight picked out of it. Yep. Amen. Not only not only the front cover, the back cover, as with all Moon Girl books, a severe color verb going on with that with that same ad that's on the back of this cover. To get to get a 9-8 in this is probably one of the toughest black covers to get a um a nine eight in and yeah. if you find one for nine if you find it for cheap snag it snag it and i definitely agree <clears throat> that this cover does not get the, the the props that it deserves because this one was definitely definitely tough to find and definitely tough to find a high grade i'll, I'll say this there's a mel and you'll, you'll know better because you're the expert on moon girl there there's a ratio variant it's one in 25 for this book Yes, it is. The Von yes, Eden variant. There's 185, 186, something like that on the census. Um, there's about 60 of these. So there's three times of, as many on the census of the 1 in 25 as there are of this book total. So the 125, there's 168 9 or just 168 total? Total, total. Okay. So total books on the census, not not 9 eights, just on I mean, the census. Again, you're not going to find a lot of 9 eights, Moon period, because, again, they all have that same ad. On, on the on the back and they get they get screwed with that color up thing, and <laughs> to get a nine eight in any one of these versions of Moon Girl, that was down to number one. It's it's tough, I'm telling you. Yeah, and Moon Girl's getting their her own animated show yeah. um, on Disney Plus. Um, I know this character is near and dear to Mel's heart. Oh, for um, sure. And um, you know, I think she's got a tremendous amount of potential. But this book right here is is undervalued. You can probably find this for. Thirty-five to fifty dollars, and I think that's a steal. Just check be the, aware of the grade on this thing because it check it, the it, check the back picks lower yeah. lower 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 right corner. It's color up all, all, all up and down that thing. Check that's, them out. Yeah, check the back cover. 
I own three copies of this book now, and two of the copies have this very similar that color, but and two have the severe uh, color rub on the back cover. But I have one that is clean. That's the one that I'm probably going to send it to. Make sure you check the back cover. Page. And be careful when pressing this as well, because that that color rub comes right off. Absolutely. All right. Well, that that is our list for this week.